Okay, so you're going to notice that once that has actually attached, it's no longer in that view that we saw over here in our Revit file. It's going to create a new view for you, and that's going to be the perspective. But if you come into, into this menu here by clicking on perspective, and you switch over to 3D view, this 3D view is actually the one that you took your FBX file from. So we can come to our field of view and back that out so we can actually see the geometry that we created. By holding down the wheel mouse, you can actually pan around as well and get a bit better view. So this is more like what we were looking at before. I'll just bring that back up a bit. So you can modify the view of your camera quite easily in a number of ways. You can just use that pan option like I was just doing or you can come into a side view we'll say we'll go front and because we're in a shade mode that is uh, well sh shaded we can't see what we want so we'll just change that to wireframe and now this might be a little bit jumbled up but we should be able to see our camera here okay so there's our camera so if we select the camera we can move that around as well right so uh, we'll just go back to our camera view and we'll adjust it accordingly in here so that's fine now what I want to do is I want to bring that logo in in another way I want to bring in the part file so this is a great way that Inventor and 3D, uh, 3ds Max work together however upon installation you're going to need to uh, make sure that you have the Inventor server installed. So let's go and bring in that logo as an IPT file. I'm going to come to the top and again I'm going to change that over to wireframe. I'm just going to back out a little bit. This should bring it right to my, my center point. But I'll come up to the application window and choose import. And this time I'm just going to use the import option and go to our part file here, I design logo. So I'll hit open and it shows me a dialog box. So there's some things that you'll want to make sure you check off. Um, right here where it says merge with current scene, you want to make sure that that's selected, not completely replaced. Otherwise everything that we just created with our FBX file will be gone. Uh, and then you can change the rotation axis essentially which way is up. I'm going to leave this as is because I want to I want to see which way it comes in as. So if we come back and we take a look at our inventor file, right? I'm looking at this from the bottom. If I look at it from the top, this is what I'm seeing now in 3ds Max, right? So first things first, let's just grab the logo. Let's separate it out from everything else. We'll make a group of this. So when I select it, I'm not just selecting an E or an I or what have you. Right now everything's selected because it's the last thing I, I brought in. But if I come up here to select by name and I go to the eyes, you should see all this stuff is already selected. So it's already selected. If I needed to, I could come back up and grab it there again. But I'm going to come up to group. And I'm just going to call this logo. So now if I need to select this again, I'm grabbing everything and not just not just one of these letters or parts of the symbol. So that's pretty tiny as well. So let's move this over to where we want it and we'll modify this to suit our needs. So I'm just going to bring that over to this wall. And first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to scale that so that it's large enough to see in our our camera view that should be good and now we want to rotate it so I want to rotate that 90 degrees but I get the sneaking suspicion that if I look at this now in that camera view it's going to be backwards so let's take a look and just verify it's down there. It's very hard to see at the moment. 
that I even get it. Let's come to front so I can find my selection. Okay, so there it is. Just bring that up to the main floor. Okay, so now we should be able to see it in the camera view. Okay, so yes, it's not in the orientation that we want. So let's modify that as well. We'll flip that 180 degrees. So I'm just doing that manually. You can look, if, if we were to say screw this up, we could come down here to the Y direction and actually just type in 180 and that gives us a little bit better uh, indication. It's a little bit, a little bit better way of doing it. Okay, so now that that's where I want it to be, I'm just going to place it on the wall just close enough and we'll come back to that camera view. So if we change this over to shaded, now we're seeing our logo on the table and we're seeing it on the wall as well. Okay, so just a couple things that I wanted to mention. Um, when we go back to Revit, we could actually put this into a cloud render right now and take a look and, and get that back really, really quickly. Or we could come back to 3ds Max and do a quick render of this as well. But the reason why I mention the cloud render is because Inventor doesn't really have the option of doing a cloud render, but it doesn't mean that you can't take geometry from Inventor and render it in the cloud. You just need to do it from Revit or from AutoCAD. So we could do that in here, the cloud render, or we could render it from AutoCAD. And we can do that in Revit as well. So those are some uh, simple procedures uh, some simple workflows, I guess, from bringing geometry from one application to another. Um, some really great things about this is that now we can change these materials independently of one another because we have two copies. We've got the DWG and we have our um, inventor part. So right now this material is going to be that stainless steel that we have in our inventor part file, but there's nothing stopping us from creating a new material here in 3ds Max and applying that to it. So if we wanted to just make this uh, color, well let's do something that's a little bit closer to our team colors. Oh, I got the wall selected there, not my, not my logo. Easily enough, let's see if we can get that selected. One to groups, so I come up to groups, select logo, and now I should be able to apply that blue material. There we go. So that's a little bit more as to what we want. And you can do the same thing here with this one as well. Even though it's glass and it's linked, you can change those materials after the fact. I don't know if I want to stick around long enough for this render to come through. I'll just pause it for the time being and we'll take a look at that in a sec. Now I kind of forgot what I was saying because I paused this for too long but here is the final outcome of that render. So as you can see we've got our logo here on the wall and our logo here on the table and some nice tables, some windows, doors, all that good stuff. Anyway, thanks for watching. Talk to you soon.